What initially put Thomas Merton on the world's map was the publication in 1948 of his autobiography, perhaps some of you have read it, uh, The Seven Story Mountain. I've lost count of how many copies of the book have been printed in English and other languages over the past 64 years, but we're talking about millions. It was an account of growing up on both sides of the Atlantic, what drew him to become a Roman Catholic as a young adult. Finally, what led him in 1941 to become a Trappist monk at a monastery in rural Kentucky. He may someday want to visit a Trappist monastery, and if so, it's the Abbey of Our Lady of Gethsemane, not too far from Louisville. Merton was only 33 years old when that book, Seven Story Mountain, appeared. To his publisher's amazement, it became an instant bestseller. It was truly a life-changing book for many readers. If you tried to assemble in a one place all the people who would say that book was one of the life-changing books for me, I think you'd need a football stadium to hold the crown. Merton was and remains a controversial figure, though he was a member of a monastic order well known for silence and for taking distance from worldly affairs, Merton was outspoken on various topics that many regard as very worldly affairs. Merton was a critic of much that was happening in the world and also a critic of a Christianity in which religious identity was submerged in national identity. Merton got into hot water for his writings on war and peace as well as for his participation in both inter-Christian as well as inter interreligious dialogue. Through most of Merton's life, in fact I could say on, right almost to the end, there was a Berlin Wall running between Catholics and Protestants. To the alarm of many good people, on both sides of this divide, Merton climbed over the palisade. Still more controversial, he regarded dialogue with people of non-Christian religious traditions, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, as not only useful and necessary, but a profoundly Christian activity. Not all Christians agree. Some people were scandalized, some still are, that a Trappist monk would engage in dialogue with the Dalai Lama. In fact, one of the interesting stories is after Merton's death, the Dalai Lama, on one of his trips to the United States, managed to get somebody to take him by helicopter from Louisville to the monastery where he landed on, uh, near Merton's grave and sat for half an hour on Merton's grave. Gives some idea of how profound the connection was between Merton and people of other religious traditions. One of Merton's significant friendships was with Dorothy Day. And I, I gather many of you know who she was, but I'll refresh your memory. Another controversial person. As it happened, she is someone whose life began just a few blocks from where we are today. I, on my way here this morning, took a detour to Pineapple Street. She was born at 71, Pineapple Street in 1897. Very few people took note of the event at the time, of course. What put Dorothy on the map was her effort to weave together radical convictions about the social order with Christian life. This endeavor occurred after she became a Catholic when she was 30 years old. Less than six years after that event, in 1933, she founded and began editing a newspaper, Christen, where is the Catholic worker? If you don't have a copy, help yourself, they open the table. From that eight-page journal, the Catholic worker movement quickly emerged. So it wasn't just a newspaper for, for long, it quickly became a movement that it still exists and is very vibrant today. It's a movement known for its many houses of hospitality for people who are generally unappreciated and unwelcome. Like Merton, she's also well known for her writings, which include a wonderful autobiography, one of the best autobiographies of the last 50, 100 years, The Long Loneliness. I recommend it to you. If books by Merton have sold millions of copies, Catholic worker communities have served millions of meals. But the Catholic worker is also known for its acts of protest against war and social injustice. Many people associated with the Catholic worker have served periods in jail for acts of civil disobedience or for refusing to take part in war. Dorothy herself was jailed at least eight times. The first time was for taking part in a suffragist demonstration in front of the White House in 1917, just before World War I. When she had uh, just, uh, just turned 20 at that time, and her last arrest and confinement was for striking, was for standing side by side with striking farm workers in California in 1973 when she was 75. So that's 55 years approximately of taking part in protest movements that in, 
included actions of being arrested. If Thomas Merton was occasionally controversial, Dorothy Day was controversial pretty much all the time. For those who think of saints as generally speaking law-abiding folk, it may strike them as remarkable that the Catholic Church is currently considering a proposal from the Archdiocese of New York to recognize Dorothy as a saint, to put her on the calendar of the church and remember her annually on her feast day, Dorothy Day, Saint Dorothy of New York. More than a decade has passed since the late Cardinal John O'Connor launched the process. The current Archbishop Cardinal Dolan has pursued the process vigorously, winning the unanimous backing of all the American Catholic hierarchy. It has now approached the point where Dorothy has been given the title Servant of God, Dorothy Day, by the Vatican. And we, perhaps we will come in time to see her known as Blessed Dorothy, and finally, perhaps, as Saint Dorothy. It would not astonish me if there are people in this room today who will one day be present for a canonization, which presumably, if it happens, would be in St. Patrick's Cathedral here in New York.